An Indiana state law bill might make it easier to prosecute rape and sexual assault suspects. And if passed into law, House Bill 1079 would be the first change to rape law in Indiana since the 1800s. Fox 55's Brianna Bias tells us what the bill would change and what one local survivor thinks of it. We're taught that no means no from a young age. But sexual assault survivor Ashley Euland Haid doesn't think you should have to say the word no for someone to respect your autonomy. A lot of people have it in their brains that, well, she didn't say no, so she wanted it. And that is not the case. She says she knows what it's like to not get to choose how her body is treated. Myself, I was assaulted by somebody I was in a serious relationship with twice this happened two different people current indiana law states that rape suspects cannot be convicted unless there's proof of physical force or the victim's inability to consent but she says that true consent goes much deeper than just not fighting the person off the fact that they have to show some kind of um physical force is absolute nonsense I shouldn't have to show up to the police station with a black eye. It's stories like hers that compelled State Representative Sharon Neagle to try to change state law. So she wrote Indiana House Bill 1079. Currently, our rape statute has not been uh, updated since the 1800s. And we primarily rely on case law when we uh, uh, a victim goes to court. The new bill creates room for victims to be believed in court without having to show proof of physical injury. What we do know is that also uh, verbally or uh, visual conduct can also um, relay the same message of, of uh, non-consenting. But Euland Hayde says even if the law changes, things won't really get better until civilians start holding their friends accountable to better actions. But even though no law can change what victims have experienced, Nagel hopes the bill will bring them more justice afterward. In Fort Wayne, I'm Brianna Bias, Fox 55 News. House Bill 1079 received final approval from the House today in a vote 90 to 1. It's now on its way to Governor Holcomb's desk.